We've seen a big point this morning already. The overwhelming generosity of God in Christ drives the Christian to radical generosity in return. Not as buckets gathering dust, but as pipeways of blessing to others. And we'll do so not bitterly, and not compelled, but with joy because of the good that it's going to do. Okay, but what good will it do? That's what I want to look at briefly in our final two points. And the first thing Paul points us towards is this. Generous Christians reap an abundance of Christ-likeness. That's verses 9 and 10. Think about what we've seen already. Jesus spent himself, didn't he? Became poor so that we might become rich. We who were ourselves ashes and dust have been raised up to eternal sonship. It's as if Jesus has kicked open the doors of the infinite treasury of God's blessings for our good and they just pour out of the doors into our lives. But he pours out those blessings on us in order that we do good works. And to think a bit about what those good works are in due course. But Jesus poured himself out for us and the idea is that we pour ourselves out for others. We follow Jesus, we imitate Jesus, he is the model for our life. Of course, we need to be specific, don't we? Why did Jesus pour himself out? What blessings did he seek for us that took him to the cross? There were lots of things that Jesus did, lots of good works that Jesus did, but I take it the one that drives his ministry, uh, drove him to come from heaven to earth and to die on the cross, was this. He wanted to make billions of people rich beyond their wildest dreams by bringing them back to God for all eternity. That's the good work that Jesus did, and we're the, uh, the wonderful recipients of it. And now I take it we have the same good works to do. If it's true that everything here on earth will turn to ashes and dust, if it's true that people will either spend eternity in hell or eternity in glory, if it's true that Christ has paid the penalty for sin, then just as he died to bring people to God, then surely we must do all that we can to bring people to God through the gospel. And when we do that, something extraordinary happens. We become more like Jesus. That's what verses 9 and 10 are about. Paul calls it righteousness. And Paul promises in verse 10 a harvest of your righteousness. Increasingly bearing the likeness of the perfectly righteous, the perfectly good Jesus. More holy, more like God. We become righteous just like Jesus is righteous. He gave himself for our salvation, so we now give ourselves for others' salvation, and in doing so we are being righteous. Isn't that good news? That you can become more like Jesus today? It's why as a church we long for the opportunity to share Jesus with Willoughby, Kirkeller and beyond. We want to maximise our opportunities so that thousands of people come to Christ as Saviour and Lord. As we give ourselves to that mission, so we become more faithful to Jesus ourselves. We grow in our discipleship. We become more and more like him in our character. I mean, just, wow! And can you see how living like this really is our light shining in a dark world? A, a, the world cannot understand a generous church because giving away our time, our money, our energy, giving is exactly contrary to the, the, the bucket of dust mindset of the world, isn't it? A benefice of Christ-like people is going to stand out profoundly. More than that, joyfully self-sacrificial rather than selfish people, well, that light will shine for miles around, won't it? People will know us as the Christ-like community. Do you see, if we are gripped by the generosity of Christ and the abundance of God's goodness to us, we're going to be able to be joyful, sacrificial givers. And as we give from what God has given to us, we will reap a harvest of righteousness. And there is even more good news to come after this. <laughs>